Hello, sportsmen. Well, you know, for our deer season opening day report, we sat in the blind, you and me and John Ford behind the camera for geez, 11 and a half hours the first day. Well, we got the buck, but you know, that's only part of the story. Now we're gonna go to the deer processor. I'm gonna pick up the meat and we're gonna find out how deer season was for everybody else. I have a feeling that he's right up to his neck in deer. We're gonna check on that in just a moment. You stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's time for the Practical Sportsman. What is deer hunting all about anyway? I mean, a lot of people ask me that and you know, they have a concept that all it is is being out in the woods with a gun and shooting the deer. They think that's the, the whole project. Well, remember back on opening day, John Ford and I were in the blind 11 and a half hours, sitting, being relatively quiet, watching for deer. We saw lots of deer, but that's, that's one part of deer hunting. Another part, and just a part, is shooting the deer. And on the second morning of the season, that buck walked across the field. I didn't have much time, but that part of the hunt went by very quickly. It's a four point. He's gonna go. Let me know when. You ready? Yeah. Dumped him right there. Shoulder shot. That was perfect. That was perfect. Oh. Oh, that shot. The only way to relive that little teeny moment of deer hunting is to look at it on videotape because it really is a very small part of hunting and there's a lot more that happens after the shot. Now we went out, tagged the deer, John Ford field dressed it for me because my back was killing me, we loaded it up on the pickup truck, took it back to camp, talked about it, but you know the hunt still isn't over. We had to take it that night to the deer processor down in Ovid. Now this is Bob Lucina, right here we are at Bob's Deer Processing. Now here's a guy who decided to go into business for himself with Bob's Deer Processing. You know, it's a type of business that I think it, it's sort of an illusion in a way. You get lots of business and it all comes at once at deer season. And when that happens, you get stacks and stacks of deer that you have to cut up for the happy customer. So let's stop in here at Bob's. I tell you, he's, he's, got, he's got them piled up outside right now that they're loading them up and putting them in the coolers, but it looks like this was a banner deer season. I would say that Bob Lucina is having the deer processors dream a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, there's <laughs> so many deer to deal with, but look at this, John. Look at the antlers on these babies. Boy, this is some nice looking bucks. Find out how soon he's going to get those hanging in the cooler and how many deer are in the cooler. Oh, where are the crowds? Here's the man himself, Bob Lucina, Bob's deer processing. And we got mom here working. How you doing, mom? Fine, fine. It's a family business. And you're wrapping the steaks and. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, look at these steaks, John. See, this is how you guys at home who want to butcher your own deer, if you want to take the time and the patience to get all of the fat and connective tissue off, those are beautiful looking steaks. Here's the maestro. Maestro who has cut up how many deer this season? Uh, we're at almost 600 right now. Of course, you haven't done that many. No. I happen to see a few outside. Yeah, there's quite a few outside yet. Now, with just you and mom here, how are you going to catch up? Well, the crew will come in now. Oh. At school's out. Oh, okay. The night shift will be here. Okay, so you hire school kids to... Yeah, quite a bit. Yep. Now, as you're trimming, what are you trimming off here? You got a steak or a roast? Yeah, or this what? is just off the hind quarter, and I'm just getting all, all this stuff off from it. Mm -hmm. And all the icky goes in the barrel. Icky in the barrel. Yeah, and the rest goes in there for hamburger. Burger stuff goes in here. Now, what are those gloves you're wearing? They're not the cut-proof gloves. Well, no, but they, it, it, it keeps my hand clean. If somebody comes in, I have to take them off, then I got clean hands to work with. And it looks better when the people come in. So they're just rubber gloves? Just about everybody, everybody wears them, yeah. Do uh, you do that for any sort of health reasons or anything? I mean, you know, the talk no. about tuberculosis or Lyme no, disease I or just, anything? No, I just started it, and I just always kept on doing it. Just, hey, c can you put the knife down a moment and, and give us a quick tour? Because sure. we got people that want to know how the deer season was, and we always use you 
as, as a, a test, you know, how many deer you have in compared to last year. What do we got going here? Well, what do you want to see first? Well, you got what? 555? Yeah, 555. Is that where we're at? Yeah, I shot down there um, Tuesday, Tuesday night and opened back up again Friday. And most of the people came back because we had two coolers full. Two coolers. Well, let's see what, this is the freezer? Is yeah, this, that's the uh, freezer there. Okay, looks, looks to me like you're up to 395. Uh, I just, I'm just cutting right now 401. 401. So you have about 100 and, 140 or 50 deer. Yeah, about 156 to go. 156 to go, and then of course more people will bring them in. Well, let's, let's go through here. This is where you have the, the carcasses hanging. Of course, you got to strip the hide off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is where we skin and quarter our deer right in here. Okay. So you got a couple on deck. Now let's go back through here, John. Oh, here, here's a collection of knives. I bet you they're sharp. And most of them are extremely sharp. Now we're into the cooler. Oh, well, you've taken, uh, taken down a row of deer. Yeah, we've, um, we've been working on this cooler basically. When one gets full, we just switch over to this one. Everything is in row. And we got just this row against the wall to do yet, and then we go back out and start in the other cooler. Okay, well let's take we'll a look. Keep, them, keep it rotated, right in line. Well, some of these racks. Here's a, it's a nice eight point. Mainly, ooh, look at this tall rack here, another eight point. Most of these seem to be bucks, is that right? Uh, more does are coming in now, but we've had a lot of bucks come in. Uh, during bow season, the bucks are coming in probably Oh, I would say 10 to 11 bucks every three does. Hmm. But now gun season, we, we've had a lot more does come in now. A lot of the big bucks have already gone. But we've had a couple of nice 12 points, 10 points. Wow. Well, let's, this is your, the cooler that you had, and you added a new cooler. Yeah, I got a new cooler now. So how many deer are hanging in here right now? And which one? This one here? This one. Oh, I don't know. Maybe 45, 50. 45, It holds okay. 120. Okay, this one right here, they just brought this in today. His boy shot it from Ohio. And uh, right now, it's still bull season down there. That don't, gun season don't open up for, probably, I think, until the end of the week, then it opens up. Huh. But he said this one here was a small one compared to the other ones that he's seen. He's well, seen a lot. Isn't that what everybody yeah. says? So, huh. that is a big deer, though. Now, wh what about these deer laying here? You said these are the ones that, that, that came in today? Yeah, these are the ones that came in today. Now, er, and when I'm here by myself, we just slay them here until the other guys come in. Then every night, everything is hung up. Okay. But now, they're all right in order. You know, people are going to wonder, is this sanitary to have them laying down like this? As long as it's cold. When it's warm or rainy, they go right in. And that, usually the people who bring them in will help me hang them right up. Okay, but I mean, the fact is that these deer are field dressed. The hide is on the outside. And really, there's no way to contaminate the meat. No, they're Because all right. they're all... Yeah. And, and they hang them up. Well, let, let's go take a look. Now, in the second cooler, this is a cooler that our enterprising Bob Lucina built for this deer season. I mean, you uh, have this baby loaded. Yeah, we filled this up on Sunday. So the deer hang, well, right now it's... Well, uh, this is the second time this is full. This is already filled up <laughs> and uh, emptied out, and we just filled this in again from Monday to, like, Tuesday. It, it refilled again. Of course, you don't have to have the air conditioner on or the... The freezer on. No, I, a lot of times I use blowers when it's just cold out. It's colder outside than what my compressor can run. Oh, no kidding. So, so this, this is great weather for me. I guess. Well, right up there you have some hides. Yeah, this is where um, basically in October and stuff I store some of my hides until I get my semi in. Oh, a, a semi truck over there? Yeah, I got a semi trailer over there. Uh, I filled one of them last year. I had like 4,200 hides in it. Oh, so you take in people's deer hides, right? Other yeah, than just I, right. the deer that you're. I'll go. Them. I'll go around the around the state when season's over and buy other people's hides too. Wow. Plus my own. So this is another little side business from from the deer processing. Yeah, I gotta keep something going until grass grows. Now, how do you? Now these don't look like. Well, I guess they're salted. This is yeah, salt out salt, here, huh? Right. That we salt them real good. I go through. I think last year I went through like five ton of salt. Holy cow. So you take these hides down to somebody and you, and you make that their nightmare because well, they have to go through and cut all of the meat off of this. Right. Um, a guy comes and picks them up with another semi. We load them all up. Then they go either New York or Wisconsin. I'll be darned. And uh, it's a lot of work. Well, that's something else. Well, how would you size up the season, Bob? Um, right now, I think it's doing a lot better than last year. Uh, I, I, look to I mean, do, do you think it is that just because your business is up? Uh, but does I, that I don't know. We've season? had a lot, a lot of new people this year, 
and a lot of the old people are back. But the people, the reports I've been getting from up north has been the deer has been real, real down. But down south around here, it's been great. Guys have been bringing in three, four deer at a time. Wow. So and, they've been uh, filling the tags. Is that is that because the computer glitched and they got extra <laughs> doe tags or what? Yeah, some guys are, are bragging about they got three, four doe tags and what a mess, huh? They'll be using them this week. Well, how do you how do you keep uh, your deer straight here? Everybody gets a number. Oh, when you bring them in? Yeah. Yeah, they, everything is right in order. So you from do, number one right on right on through. So you do each deer individually. Right. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of guys Whenever. are concerned about that. Oh yeah, each deer is they got like two tags on them, and it's written down. So if a tag does get ripped off, I can go back in the sheet in the side, and when it's hanging up, you can take any tag off, and I'll tell you whose that deer belongs mm -hmm. to. So you experience, experience, and keep your eye on it. Right, because people always think they're getting gypped. Yeah, I know my I deer know. was bigger than this. Huh? Well, the the ones that look like they weigh 100 pounds or less will weigh, because we've had a couple of people come in and really irate and. When the deer only weighs 50, 60 pounds, you're, <laughs> you're not, not going to get back a lot of meat. And, it's right. not, and I feel really bad when I want to give back one sack of meat. You know, I, I feel terrible, but <laughs> I can't give no more back than what they give yeah. me to, to work with. So we, a lot of those small deer will weigh just for protection. Now, it's been my experience when I butchered deer myself, I'd get maybe 35 pounds of meat, boneless. You're, you get back approximately one third of the deer's weight. Mm -hmm. So it, it basically where it was shot, we've had them shot in the hindquarters a couple of times. And there is, that's where the steaks are. Mm -hmm. So they lose that meat. Right, and we've had, uh, uh, last year a guy came in with two eight points. Or two different guys, but they mm -hmm. both had two eight points. And they both weighed exactly 135 pounds. One guy got back three sacks of meat, and one guy got back two. Because the hind quarters on their one were wide, were huge. Mm -hmm. And the other guy was really slim, but he had a big chest. Hmm. And that's just the way it goes. You know, that's, if you got big hind quarters, you're going to get back a lot of meat. Mm-hmm. That's, hmm. I can't put meat that isn't there in the bag. So. so so there's two things to look at when you're hunting, the size of the rack and the size of the rear end. Because that's, <laughs> yeah, that's where the meat is. We've had, we got... Venison is what deer hunting is all about. If you ask most deer hunters, and I'll tell you what, the hunting season for many of us is over, used our permits or ran out of time or whatever. But here's what we have to show for it. This is from that six point. Now these aren't all of the steaks and chops uh, and the loins, but a good share of them. I've already been eating them, and they're great when they're fresh, sort of like fish. Now this isn't all there was, this was just a loin. This bag here is full of the burger, labeled hamburger, but it's not hamburger. This is venison burger, we know what it is. This is what deer hunting will be about for the next few months in the Trost household. I'll be eating lots of this. We've got great recipes on the show. And by the way, I did get a lot of it done up on hamburger or venison burger. Great in chili, sloppy joes, burgers, um, all kinds of things you can make with burger. Anyway, that's the scoop on the venison, but many deer hunters have more to show for it than just the meat on the table. They have antlers uh, like this, which they may qualify for Big Buck Night, but I tell you what, this one won't. This one is much too small for Big Buck Night. This is coming up next week, Thursday night, 8 p.m., live. Uh, this won't be a taped show. This will be live from the studios of Channel 56 in Detroit. It's been a busy fall, but if you have a rabbit or squirrel in the freezer, get it thawed out because Karen Flint from Newport sent us her special recipe for small game casserole. Parboil your rabbit or squirrel until the meat falls off the bones and set that boneless meat aside. Cook two packages of frozen chopped broccoli, drain off the water, then saute a cup of chopped onion with a cup of chopped celery and a stick of margarine. Then blend into that eight ounces of cheese whiz and one can of cream of mushroom soup. Now take a minute and cook two cups of minute rice. Then blend together all these ingredients, the broccoli, onion, celery, cheese whiz, mushroom soup, rice, and the small game of your choice. Bake for an hour at 350 in a casserole dish, and voila, Karen's small game casserole. Tastes like turkey, except better. Ken Lawrence from Leonard got his big buck, 12 point with a 23 and 3 8 inch spread on the 26th of November in Huron County. Man, another one from the thumb. 3.30 in the afternoon, that's not a normal time for... Right, it was state land up uh, Verona state land area. And, uh, a lot of hunting pressure up in that area. And uh, 
That's why I didn't get out until the 26th because there was just too many people out. And uh, this one afternoon I went out, um, let's see, couldn't go to the area that I normally go to because there was too many people there. Ended up in a uh, two acre little woods out in the middle of this big field. And I just sat down and uh, he come running up probably five minutes later and huh. that was it. It's, you know, that's a funny thing. A lot of these little patches of woods do hold deer, especially late in the season, where they'll run to. Right. It was probably 20 yards from another gut pile, so hmm. there was... Another deer had been taken there. Yeah, right there. I'll be darned. Well, this is a 12-point with a 23 and 3 inch spread. No doubt the biggest buck you've ever taken. Oh, definitely. Eight-pointer a few years ago, about a 17-inch spread, but that was it. Oh, well, congratulations on this. Ken Lawrence from Leonard, a big one for the trophy book. Well, let's take a look now at our guide report. There is some hunting, there's some fishing, there's things going on outdoors. Uh, starting again here, let's go up the west side of the state first. Uh, steelhead fishing is slow because of high water on the St. Joe River. That's because of the snow melt, but, you know, we're going up and down on that. Uh, they're getting some steelhead, saugatuck. Goose hunting is still good, although that closes Friday, tomorrow. Whitehall, they're getting some pike. Uh, yellow perch fishing is fair. Steelhead is good off Ludington or uh, at the river there, Ludington. Captain Amel in the Manistee River, uh, they're getting some 8 to 12 pound steelhead, but the fishing is kind of slow. Pilgrim's Village, if you want some ice fishing, I, I can't recommend it, very frankly. Uh, call for conditions. They're getting pike, crappie, and walleye through the ice. Call for conditions. I do not recommend it. There's ice out there, but, but this is a real iffy time of year. Let's jump up here to the UP. West end of the UP, the deer are starting to yard up in the west end of the UP. Uh, deer hunting has been slow and Houghton, of course, as it has been throughout the UP. I'm uh, seeing a lot of rabbits, lake trout limits, Menominee and Splake fishing off Marquette. On the east end of the UP, fishing is slow. The ice is not safe, has not been safe. They're not really predicting uh, with any certainty for this weekend either. Down here in Indian River, fishing is slow, no safe ice. According to Pat and Gary's, Alpena, Grand Lake, uh, perch and walleye are good. This is ice fishing. They're out there on four inches of ice there. So there's spots in the northern lower, probably in the UP, where they're ice fishing, but folks, a little iffy. Oscoda, steelhead, fishing is good. They're getting browns and white fish. Linwood, Saginaw Bay area, they're getting some good walleye fishing and fair perch fishing down the Detroit River. Hand liners are getting walleye in the Detroit River. That's chilly on the fingers. But they're pulling some good ones. Uh, Trenton Lighthouse, Detroit River, walleye are slow down there towards Luna Pier. Dexter, deer hunting is still reported good in the southern part of the state. Now let's take a look at our map here of snow conditions around the state. We know this for sure that there's not a lot of snow yet. Uh, that probably about matches the, the thickness of the ice out there. So snow, uh, ice fishing, uh, it's there, it's coming, but you're going to have to hang on a little more. But anyway, get outdoors this weekend for some of these activities we have. It's a great place to be. And next week, Big Buck Night, be there.